Businesses do not speak up because they do not want to be labeled a snitch. Panelists, do you see a correlation? And if so, what can be done to break down this concept of no snitching in our society that allows crime to go uncontested sometimes and to go unsolved because no one is willing to step forward and give forth the information that they have? And this is also a question I want to ask you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Rose. I appreciate that. Um, no snitching. It's interesting because I, I, we contradict ourselves. Um, it starts in the home. It's perpetuated in the schools. The number one correlation right now that we can look at is the bullying. We have thrown millions of dollars into an anti-bullying campaign. Um, when I worked for Southern Poverty Law Center, that was my job. I was director of uh, the Mix It Up at Lunch Day program, which essentially is an anti-bullying initiative that was in middle schools and high schools. Um, to try to get kids to accept one another and their differences and come together. Um, because lunch, just like Dr. King said, the most segregated hour of the week is Sunday morning between 11 and noon. Uh, the most segregated hour of the lunch day, or, or the school day, is you know that same time at lunch. Um, I remember my daughter in sixth grade, they had introduced this bully box this anonymous box and I think most schools across the country nowadays are doing it an anonymous box that's located in every hallway the principal's office it's one in every classroom kind of like a suggestion box and you're supposed to put down your grievance you know what happened who did it whatever put it in this box walk away nobody would ever ask you a question you don't identify yourself the teachers at the end of the day are supposed to pull them out report them to the office and then they deal with whatever the issue is her homeroom teacher told them, you better not. <laughs> I don't have time to deal with this. I'm not interested in deal with this, dealing with any of this. Suck it up and deal with it. And that's what a lot of parents say at home. Suck it up. Deal with it. You know, one of the questions that you proposed was um, nonviolent. How can youth today be nonviolent? Oftentimes, we're still teaching kids to, to go fight. Beat them up. You got a problem? Beat them up. Um, there was a, a cartoon circulated on Facebook for a while, and every now and again it resurfaces. It's an image of a classroom, it says then, and it's an image of a classroom, it says now. It's a teacher behind a desk, a child, and two parents in both situations. Um, in the then picture, it is the child, you know, kind of couched under, the parents standing over the child, the teacher with a look on their face like, mm hmm you know, now you're going to get it. In the now picture, it is the teacher, you know, cowering under, the child standing there like, you know, what you gonna do, and the parents and the teacher's face. That's a that's our reality right now, you know, and so we're 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 saying at home, you know, um, we're, we're we're spending all this money and we're putting out this thing of, um, you know, don't bully, don't be a bystander, um, you know, stand up, be an ally to a friend, you know, even to a non-friend you know, whatever, and um, it's looked down upon. You know, that's not acceptable behavior because nobody, the adults don't want to deal with it. Uh, we're not empowering uh, the kids with the words that they need to be constructive. Um, there's still a fear of police. You know, that's another issue when we talk about racism and where are we now. Um, we're still in the same place in a lot of ways, just like Mr. Robert said, you know, we have a fear. We have a fear of the government. We have a fear of police. You know, we don't want to put ourselves in a position where the attention can be spun and focused on us. We want to stay, you know, flowers against the wall. We want to blend in. We don't want to stand out in any kind of way. And we can talk about that from an academic standpoint. We can talk about that from an activist standpoint. But definitely when it comes to, you know, the streets, I mean, we have this whole street hood mentality thing that. I mean, whatever, come on, for real. It's time to wake up. I mean, it's, it's irritating, it's boring. You know, do something different. 
Mr. Odom, what is your take on how the whole concept of no snitching can be addressed among young people? Um, it starts in the home. As I said before, teaching you know, the home. Um, <laughs> We're often bullied in school, so our friends, you know, it's peer pressure. But if you start in the home as parents, teaching your kids the difference in right from wrong, then we can better serve our community. Ms. Kennedy, what do you think you will teach your kids about the concept of not telling who did what or not reporting wrong people? Um, it's kind of crazy. It's, so many answers to it, but it, it seemed like you should only have one. Um, I mean, I'm still young myself. I see it go on every day. You, it's, in, it's, it's grounded in you to not snitch. I mean, if you got a brother or sister, your mama going to tell you, stop all that telling. Because, you you know, you, you constantly telling on them, and then you, you go to school and you got somebody that's bothering you, and how you expect to take that on? Um, Though that's not your sibling, you still feel like um, mama told me don't tell. So maybe if I just take it on myself and try to beat them up, you know, I can go on about my life. But um, I mean, I take it as just laying it all on the table. Sometimes it can be harsh, sometimes it won't. I mean, but you got to get it to them some way or another. Um, I never really been one to try to hold it back, but that's why I have a daughter now. She's nothing but one. But I know it's going to come a time where I have to sit down and explain certain things to her. Um, I just have to be the one to just put it on the table and explain to them well, certain situations may arise, but it's up to you to take the time and figure out what would be the appropriate answer to doing so, rather than just because I told you, you know, stop all that telling. Don't expect to have to always be that way. Just take on your situation and analyze it before you just jump into it and it be the wrong answer. Such insightful panelists. Very good answer. Mr. Robertson and then Mr. As, as a retired educator. <laughs> and a dad. <laughs> well, I was trying to keep it. Oh, <laughs> as a retired educator, 30 years in Jefferson County, I created in Palmas. And you cannot, as a principal of a school, you cannot operate a school without having snitch. <laughs> you can't. You must have one on your staff. <laughs> There's some snitches in here now. <laughs> President Ward will know what happened five minutes after this program is over. <laughs> and he didn't have to be here. What I did. Uh, I changed the image of snitching and called them student monitors. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a pride in monitoring the hall. I've had a young man who was upset with his dad, brought up 38 to school. One of my monitors came to me and said, Bob has a 38 in his locker. I said, you go to class, I am. I called the police and told him to stay in the office and I bring him down. I went to the classroom, asked him could he come out for a few moments. He got real nervous. I said, I need to look in your locker. By law, I didn't have to ask him. I couldn't go in there, but I wanted him to get it out and give it to him, to give it to me. And because you brought a weapon to school, we're going up and I'm going to turn you over to the police. Once the students realized that it was for their safety, they didn't care that much about telling because they wanted to do what was right. If you begin to change the value of good information, mm -hmm. see, we are still on slave mentality. See, we had that. The one in the house that did everything, and he told others what he wanted to do. If y'all don't know the story about the house in the field, uh, that, that was a different. And, and, and so the house always told on the field because he didn't want the field to come in and get the good stuff that he was getting. So we need to change our mentality. But I actually used it. I said a pride. I gave awards for things. The students enjoyed it. And they knew. I, I, I would tell them, this is my house. I spend more hours here than I do at home. And because of that, we're going to have a safe school. And the only thing I had to do was protect the information. But it saved a lot of lives because they had a different sense about it. 
the only time it's going to change is when we remove the fear of what's going to happen to me. If, if Martin Luther King had not removed the fear of what was going to happen to him, the Reverend Shelley would have said this to me. He said, after that 18 sticks of dynamite blew our houses down, I had no fear that God was not going to take care of me. And if we get a little different attitude about, I'm not going to accept what's going on. I'm going to stand up for right. And if the scale begins to get on the right side, it will change everything. So I think it's an attitudinal thing that we've been taught not to snitch. And then you get mad with the police when you can't go across the street and get the guy. When you saw him do it, you're not going to tell him that he's going to come and get you. Then when he get you, then you're going to tell him. <laughs> but there is a sense of changing the number system so that people will have a sense of pride in maintaining a certain standard within their community and their community homes. And while I'm here, my wife is here too. Uh, she's in the back, retired administrator from Birmingham City School, hired a lot of people, and I want to tell her I love her, and I'm glad she came with me. <laughs> Thank you. That's real snitch in there. <laughs> Thank you so much for that answer, and you wanted to address that? We, we're running a few minutes uh, okay. over, so. What I want to do is, I'm not going to deal with the snitch and thing, because I think there's possibly more good in it than bad. Maybe someone needs to be told. But what I do want to leave you with today, and I'm not ending this program. I'm very proud of my son and I'm very proud of you. That you can get there from where you are today. That this lovely audience of females and males, uh, you're going to a state school where the tuition is less, but wherever you want to go in life, if you really put your mind to it, you can get there from here. I want to thank you for coming out in support of this program, but I don't want you to leave without readjusting, if you need it, your thinking. That I'm on the right track, I just got to keep, I got to keep going. Keep moving. Congratulations to all of you for being here. There are so many of you, who, uh, us, who are in jail or someplace else. But I think you'll make it doing good with your time. And I just want to tell you, thanks so much. And make my son's job easy. <laughs> I don't mean that uh, he's not willing to work. But help him, because you can get there from here, but you're going to have to listen and work hard. In addition I, to thanking I, one those one who... Thing, one thing, one thing. <laughs> yes, sir, Father. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> but I was from a family of five. My mother passed when we were just young children. And my Big sister turned into a United States Congressperson, the first female black to head a major committee. She passed away a couple of years ago. We all have college degrees, and our children are doing well. I'm just saying it's, it's not easy, but you're on the right track. Just keep pushing, and if we can help, let us know. Thank you. In closing, we do have parting gifts for our panelists. I also would like to thank all of those who came here, not only for your own purposes, but also to support someone else. In that vein, I'd like to recognize Ms. Brenda Fosh in the back of the room, if you would please stand. I didn't recognize my wife, my better half, <laughs> Miss Darlene Robinson Miller. I'd 
I'd like to thank the, the library and all of those who helped to support this program to make it what it is. Um, I thought about the speech. We're celebrating 50 years of the letter from the Birmingham jail. We're celebrating Lawson State being here, or Lawson State has been here for 64 years. But the question at the end will not be how long were you here, but it will be what have you done with the time that you spent here. So I want you to ask yourself that question. And then think about who, if not me, where, if not here, and when, if not now. Thank you so much for coming out to celebrate.